Before we get started with this very special build the roster, we've got an extra spooky follow-up to our last episode. In the Halloween episode, I told you that we were partnering with Terabytes, a brand new documentary about the history of horror video games. This love letter to those games that keep you up at night and haunt your dreams is being made by the passionate creators behind such documentaries as In Search of Darkness, easily the best salute to A's horror films ever, and FPS, an incredible in-depth exploration of the first-person shooter genre. Well, thanks to all of you filling out those surveys in the last episode, I'm pleased to announce that Terabytes is now deep in development, with an expected release date of early next year. This will be a multi-part series with each video tackling a different topic, and the list of guests that they have lined up is incredible. So first off, thank you to everyone out there who filled out the surveys in the last episode. You guys helped these filmmakers push this project ahead, and I am pleased to announce that we are once again partnering up with Terabytes for this film's release. If you follow our affiliate link in the description down below, then you can pre-order a copy of Terabytes right now, and by doing that, not only will you be helping out this channel since we'll get a little bonus off of it, but also you'll get your name in the credits access to behind-the-scenes making of features all year round, as well as a bonus digital copy of FPS, their first-person shooter documentary, so you're getting two films in one for this offer. And if you want to go above and beyond all that, if you pledge to the higher tiers, then there's tons of other special bonuses you can get. You only have until March 3rd to get your pre-order in, though, so remember, if you want to be first in line for this new documentary all while helping this channel out, then use the affiliate link in the description down below. Thanks again to Terabytes for reaching out to me. I have said it before, but I will say it again. This is not me just reading off an ad simply because I'm being hired to do so. No, I am a legit big fan of these guys, so this is a big honor for me. And a huge thank you to everyone who has been supporting this film so far. Now, let's dive into today's special episode of Build the Roster, as I attempt to go for the greatest tonal shift in this channel's history. Hello, fighting game fans, and welcome to a new episode of Build the Roster. Now, we've got a tradition on this channel, where the first episode of Build the Roster each year is always dedicated to making a new Smash like. Some new platform fighter crossing over multiple properties under one banner. We've done it for indie games, we've done it for Sega, we've done it for Xbox, which at the time of this recording might become very poorly aged very soon. But when thinking of what our new Smash like should be for this year, it dawned on me. We've done Smash Lite games, but we've never actually done Smash itself. Yes, Super Smash Bros, the king of crossover games, the game that put platform fighters on the map, and the game that ushers in each generation of new Nintendo hardware. When a brand new console hits the market, everyone is waiting for that brand new Smash game. Well, this year, with rumors stirring of a brand new Nintendo console on the way, and not like the previous three years of rumors, no, this time those rumors are serious. It could actually maybe sort of happen this year, and if not this year, then totally the next year. My point is, with the Switch 2 probably coming sometime soon, what better time to finally build the roster for the next installment of Super Smash Bros? So join me today as I answer the question, how would we make a brand new Smash Bros, and how could we make it even better? We can't. That's it, that's the answer. You can't make a better Smash Bros roster. Are you insane? Smash Ultimate was the peak of fighting game rosters. There will never be a better fighting game roster than this game. What Sakurai and everyone on Smash pulled off is monumental and will live on as a legend that no one will ever be able to match again, not even the next Smash Bros. So... Yeah, instead I decided to just get weird with it on this episode. Enjoy! Welcome to Build the Roster, the show where we take a hypothetical fighting game and build our dream roster around it. Although today, <laughs> yeah, that isn't entirely the case. Yes, today we're going to be taking on the legendary Smash Bros and building the roster for the next installment in the franchise. However, we say this is a show all about making our dream rosters for a hypothetical game, but the roster for Smash Ultimate was just that. The ultimate Smash roster. 
I'm not saying there weren't any names missing. I'm not saying it wouldn't be cool to see other characters get added. I'm saying if you want to make this roster better, a new game isn't going to do that. There will never be a base roster as good as this game again. If you want to make this roster better, a simple season of DLC is really the only way to do it. But here's the thing about build the roster. This show isn't just listing off a bunch of characters that we would like to see in a fighting game. No, it's also something of a thought experiment. It's a challenge to come up with a roster under a set list of rules. That's why I always spend the first 10 minutes at the top of every episode sounding like an IRS agent going over W-4 forms. I like to set up challenges for each episode, and normally it's nothing too complicated. But when it comes to Smash, a franchise that prides itself on anyone and everyone being a possible candidate for the game, I had to give myself a challenge. So here's our goal for today's episode. Smash Ultimate ended its development with 86 characters. Unless you count Pokemon Trainer and Pyra and Mithra as multiple characters, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Point is, the game ended with one of the biggest rosters of all time. So what would happen if that roster couldn't get any bigger? Yo, let's say that Sakurai has decided to go out on top. He says there's no way he can make a better game than Smash Ultimate, so he's retiring from the franchise, and now Nintendo turns to us, random YouTube guy, and says it's up to you to make the new roster. But here's the thing. It's impossible for us to fit any more characters into this game. This roster right here, that's as many characters as we can fit on screen. We can't go any higher. But we also need the game to feel brand new. So your job is to cut half of this roster off and then replace it with brand new fighters. Good luck! Yes, that's our challenge for today. We aren't just going to build the roster. We're going to tear the roster down, then rebuild it. We have to get rid of half the roster of Smash Bros and then come up with brand new characters to fill in all those spots. But there are a few more rules to make this even more complicated. Uh, I mean challenging. For starters, yes, there are 86 characters on this roster. But I'm going to merge all the Mii Fighters into one spot because what am I going to do? Get rid of one Mii Fighter but keep the other two? Sorry, Mii Sword Fighter, but everyone says there's too many Sword Fighters in this game, so clearly they're talking about you. No, with the Mii Fighters, either they're all in or none of them are. Also, I know someone is going to say that Pyro and Mithra should count as two characters or Pokemon Trainer should count as three, but again, I'm going to count each of them as one character because I'm not going to kick out Pyra and just leave Mithra. I'm not going to kick out Squirtle and now Pokemon Trainer can only use Ivysaur and Charizard. No, these are characters who they're either all in or it's nothing, so there's no point in dividing them up. So Pyra and Mithra, the Pokemon Trainer, and the three Mii Fighters are all going to count as just three spots leaving us with 84 characters, meaning I will need to cut out 42. But here's the other big rule. I know that most people have their Dream Smash roster and like 80% of them are all guest characters, but that is way too easy. At that point, this show just becomes me listing off characters I think are cool. So here's the rule. For every Nintendo character I remove, I have to add another Nintendo character in their place. And just to clarify, when I say Nintendo character, I don't necessarily mean a character that was made by Nintendo. I'm also counting characters who are exclusive to Nintendo consoles. For example, Sonic and Bayonetta are both made by Sega. But Sonic is on every console. Bayonetta is only on Nintendo consoles. So for this video, Sonic would be counted as a guest character. Bayonetta would be counted as a Nintendo character. And the same thing is going to be true for the Echo Fighters. I actually had multiple people suggest to me that I shouldn't even count the Echo Fighters in here, because seeing as how they use the moveset of existing characters, they're easy inclusion, so it wouldn't really make sense to cut them, so I should only worry about cutting the fully original characters. And I can understand their point, but I also understand that's the coward's way of doing this. No, nobody is safe in this. The Echo Fighters are on the chopping block too. However, just like with the Nintendo characters, if I cut an Echo Fighter, I have to replace it with another Echo Fighter. 
so no just cutting all the Echo Fighters for a quick easy spot. Also, a couple of years ago when we did our Sega Smash roster, I had a similar rule about replacing Echo Fighters with other Echo Fighters, and in that video, I said I disagree with Nintendo on what does and does not count as an Echo Fighter, but for this video to try and simplify things, I am going to just use Nintendo's official ruling on who is and isn't an Echo Fighter. So okay, to recap, we have to get rid of 42 characters, then replace them, and we have to replace all the Nintendo characters with other Nintendo characters, guest characters with other guest characters, and Echo Fighters with other Echo Fighters. Everybody understand? Great! Everybody ready to get really upset as I remove your mains from the game and cast them into the Shadow Realm? Not so great. So let's go ahead and rip that band-aid off as we begin to de-build the roster. That felt weird to say. This is unnatural. I don't like any of this. Okay, going to go through these rapid fire, and I'm going to divide these characters up by franchises to try and justify some of my choices. I remember just because a character gets cut isn't me saying they're a bad choice, just that when we have to get rid of half the roster, there are various reasons why I could understand them being cut. Starting off with the Mario franchise, some pretty easy ones here. Mario, have to keep him. Luigi, obvious choice. Peach, keep. Bowser, Wario, keep, keep. Yoshi, mm. Yeah, I know he's a beloved part of the franchise, I know he even has his own franchise, and he's been here from the start, but there's a lot of Mario characters and a lot more we could add, and the Yoshi games aren't as popular as they used to be. Yoshi can be cut from the roster and just be turned into an assist trophy. I mean, that's basically what he is in the Mario games after all. He's an assist, it would make sense. Then Dr. Mario, yeah, that's a super obvious cut. Bowser Jr., it was cool that they added him in there, it's cool that they also used all of his alternate skins to be the other Koopa kids, but he doesn't have to be in here. Here's one that will hurt a lot of people, Rosalina. She's super popular and has the Mario Galaxy games behind her, and they're some of the most critically praised Mario games in history, but those games were a long time ago, and we haven't really done a lot with her since. If there's ever a third Mario Galaxy game, she can come back, but for now, she's cut. And lastly, the first Echo cut, Daisy. I love Daisy, I think she is a super fun character, but we don't need two Peaches. Heck, considering that Peach is about to get her own game and she's going to have all these different costumes and powers that she can swap between, I would say that in the next Smash Bros, we should change Peach around so that way she plays like she will in her new game, and at that point, Daisy wouldn't even make sense as an Echo Fighter. Actually, if I'm completely spitballing here, you know what I would love to see them do with Daisy? Have her be the representative for the Mario sports games. She is known for being a tomboy, and she pretty much only pops up in the sports games, so I would love to see her come back as a unique character who uses all sports themes attack, like swinging golf clubs and tennis rackets and doing her Mario Strikers kick as her big final smash. But then we're getting into a weird territory of does changing an Echo Fighter to a full character count as cutting them and adding a new character, or does it count as keeping an old character in? Yeah, I'm not getting into that argument, so sadly, she's going to be cut. And lastly, Piranha Plant. It's cute that a regular Mario villain got put into this game as a fighter, it's very charming. But real talk, I am adding this into the script right now after I finish writing the rest of it because I completely forgot to mention Piranha Plant the first time I went through this, and I think that's all I need to say about why they're getting cut. Next, The Legend of Zelda characters. Super obvious picks here. Link, Zelda, and Gandorf, the Triforce wielders themselves, all have to stay. But Sheik, she can go. She's from one of the most legendary games of all time, but she hasn't been in anything since then. And she's also just a disguise for Zelda. Zelda is already in the game right there. We don't need Sheik. And as for Toon Link and Young Link, listen, I'm glad that Wind Waker got some rep in here, but it's been a long time since we visited the world of Wind Waker. And Young Link, do I even need to explain why this is a cut? But here's some big questions. The Pokemon characters. Pikachu, no duh, has to be in there. Pokemon Trainer, I think this is one of the smartest ways to represent the Pokemon franchise, and they have a great gimmick, gotta keep them in there. Mewtwo, one of the most iconic Pokemon of all time, easy keep. But as for the cuts, 
Jigglypuff, get the heck out of there. You were only in here because you could copy some of Kirby's moves for an easy character in the original game, and because you used to be big in the cartoon, but that was like three decades ago. You ain't that big anymore. Cut. Pichu, you were only in here to promote gold and silver. No one has thought of you since then. Cut. Now, these next few choices were a little bit tougher. Incineroar, I really dug them in the last game, but he was here to be the face of the newer Pokemon, and he's not that new anymore. I think we can cut him. Then Greninja, another Pokemon who was thrown in here to represent Pokemon who were popular when that particular Smash game came out. But here's the thing. Greninja has remained crazy popular over the years. In fact, for Pokemon's 25th anniversary just a few years ago, he was voted the most popular Pokemon. Which still surprises me so much, I have to double check it every time I bring it up. I have never heard anyone talk about him, but I guess I'm just running in the wrong Poke Circles. But if he's the number one most popular Pokemon in the world, yeah, we should probably keep him. Which sadly means I now have to make the toughest cut so far. I love Lucario. Everyone loves Lucario. Who doesn't like Lucario? But we got a lot of Pokemon in here, and we got a lot more that we could add. I think it's great that Lucario gotten in this series and that he stuck around as long as he did. But I think after three games, it's okay for him to sit this one out. Next up, the Metroid games. Samus, she's an obvious keep, but here's a shocker. Dark Samus. I say keep. We need to keep at least a few of the older Echo Fires. We can't just scrap every single Echo Fire to make this easy. We gotta keep at least some of them in here. And Dark Samus is changed up enough to make them feel really interesting to play as. And she's a good representation of the Metroid Prime series, where the hell is the fourth game, so I say we keep her. However, that is all the versions of Samus that we are going to keep because Zero Suit Samus goes right in the cuts. And lastly, Ridley. We fought for years to get Ridley in this game. I'm not cutting them out now that they're finally here. Keep. All right, going to move through these a little bit quicker. Star Fox, Fox I'm keeping. I'm getting rid of Falco and Wolf. Sorry, but they play way too similar to him. And as much as I hate saying it, Star Fox ain't what it used to be. We can keep the face of the series, but that's about all the weight it's got at this point. And also, just to remind everyone, while I consider Falco and Wolf to be Echo Fighters, Nintendo does not. Then Donkey Kong, we have to keep DK himself, but as for Diddy... Oh, this one hurts because I know people love Diddy. I know there are people screaming right now to cut Donkey and keep Diddy because people like him that much. But again, we're getting rid of 42 characters. Tough cuts have to be made. And Diddy just barely doesn't make it. I'm sorry, everybody. And sadly, I gotta cut K. Rule too. I lost my mind when K. Rule got announced for Ultimate. I've been asking for him in this game for years, and I loved being able to finally play as him. But yeah, he's the villain from the Country Games, and the Donkey Kong Country Games were a long time ago. We can cut him. Then we come to Kirby, and shockingly enough, there's only three Kirby characters in this game, and you know what? I say we keep each of them. Kirby is huge, gets brand new games constantly, and I'd say DDD and Meta Knight are both important enough to keep around. And I'll say the same for our two Animal Crossing characters. Animal Crossing is huge for Nintendo, and it's only got two characters in here. One is your in-game avatar, and the other is one of the most popular characters in recent Nintendo history. So, I say they both stay. Then, oh man, you ready for some hot takes? The Fire Emblem characters. Everyone always says there's too many Fire Emblem characters, and I love Fire Emblem. It's been one of my favorite Nintendo franchises since Awakening over 10 years ago. But... Yeah, everyone is right, there's way too many Fire Emblem characters. So let's keep Marth, since he's the OG Fire Emblem guy. But then after that, I say we cut every single other Fire Emblem character, except for one. Roy, Ike, Lucina, Corrin, yeah, especially Corrin, Robin, and Byleth, all of them can go. But I say we keep Krom. 
because he was from the Awakening games and that game re-energized Fire Emblem and even according to its developers, ended up saving the entire franchise. It feels like it would be important to keep a character from in there. But also, Krom is an Echo Fighter who uses moves from both Ike and Roy. So my logic is that by keeping him, we're keeping the movesets of two different characters alive. I know you might be asking right now, if we got rid of the two characters that he was based on, does that still mean that Krom is an Echo Fighter in this game? Uh, you know what, let's not think about that too much, otherwise I'll have to dwell on the fact that I just cut that many Fire Emblem characters. Okay, we're more than halfway through now, so let's keep pushing ahead. The Earthbound slash Mother franchise. There's two characters, we only need one. Let's keep Ness since he's from the original game. And also Lucas's game is still only available in Japan. Pit and Palatina. Oh, it would be real easy to cut both of them because the old Kid Icarus games weren't a huge staple for Nintendo and it's been a long time since that 3DS game. But goddamn, that 3DS game was good. And Pitt and Palatina and the whole Kid Icarus gang are low with so much personality and those dialogue sequences on stage are great. So let's keep Pitt, but cut Palatina. Wait, hold up, Dark Pitt was in this game too. Oh man, uh, yeah, this is not a joke. I also forgot about Dark Pitt. Uh, yeah, sorry Dark Pitt, you're cut. Then the Xenoblade representatives, we got two. Shulk and Pyra slash Mithra. I feel like we have to cut one of them, and since Shulk is the OG protag, he gets that extra point, so he gets to stay. And you know what, feels like a good time to finally address the me fighters in the room. I say keep them because it is fun to be able to customize your characters, but also this is a great way to keep including characters that couldn't make it into the official game. If you're a Smash fan, then you know that soul-crushing feeling of seeing one of your favorite characters pop up as a Mii costume because it means they'll never be in the actual game. And you can't have a new Smash game without that feeling, it's a rite of passage. So yeah, let's keep them in here, but I say we merge all three of them into one character. You select the Mii Fighter, and then you get to fully customize them with whatever moves that you want from all three of the jobs. Yes, that would create some super busted characters so they wouldn't be allowed in tournaments, but the Mii Fighters were never here to be playable in tournaments, they were always here so that way you could say, haha, look, I made Abraham Lincoln in this game. They're the ultimate just here for fun characters, and when you fully customize everything about their moveset, would be a lot of fun. Okay, now we're getting into the nitty gritty here, because the rest of these Nintendo characters come from series with only one representative. So you're about to see some whole franchises get snapped out of existence altogether. First up, Captain Falcon. F-Zero just got some kind of love from Nintendo, and the Falcon Punch is one of the most iconic fighting game moves ever. He stays. Next, Little Mac. Punch-Out is another super important franchise for Nintendo, and yes, the last installment was a long time ago, however, People still talk about that game to this day. I keep seeing brand new players getting hooked on the Wii Punch-Out game despite how old it is. So, he stays. Ice Climbers on the other hand, it was nice that they got to return for Ultimate, but they do not need to return again, they're cut. Wii Fit Trainer, super fun idea for a character, I always appreciate the weird picks. nobody is still using their Wii Fit balancing board, we can cut her. Then... Ooh, people are going to hate me for this one. Olimar... Cut. Yes, Pikmin is beloved, and it got a brand new game last year that people are really enjoying. But if we have to... If we have to make tough cuts, I think we can represent Pikmin with another character without using Olimar. He can be cut and we will return to this franchise with the new characters. Then the Inklings. Splatoon is one of the biggest, newer Nintendo franchises, at least relatively speaking. They have to stay. But going from newer characters to older characters, Duck Hunt Dog, Mr. Game & Watch, and Rob the Robot are all here to represent older classic Nintendo. I don't think that we need all three of them here. We can cut two of them and keep one, and out of these three, I'm going to go with Duck Hunt Dog. Duck Hunt was huge back in the day, and the fact that he calls out other sprites from older games that use the Duck Hunt gun is a great way of paying tribute to other games. He gets to stay. Min Min, I'm glad that ARMS got some love because that game is super fun, and I think it's got some really great character designs, but we don't need her in here more than once. 
cut. And lastly, Bayonetta. She was the winner of the original poll to include a brand new fighter. Feels like if you win that, then you get a permanent spot on the roster. And Bayonetta 3 and a totally original spin-off game both came out not that long ago for the Switch, so she's still front and center for Nintendo, she stays. And now we close it all out with the guest characters. Sonic, easy keep. The rivalry between Nintendo and Sega was the stuff of legends back in the day. Sonic being in this game is a perfect salute to the early days of the console wars. Plus, Sonic is one of the biggest video game icons of all time. And you know who else I can say that about? Pac-Man. He's one of the most important faces for the entire medium of video games. If you don't understand why he belongs in here, go and learn your arcade history. And you know what? I'm gonna throw Mega Man in there too. Another huge name for the early consoles, especially for the original Nintendo system. And when he was included in Smash 4, it was a huge moment as Capcom fans had been starving for a new Mega Man game. And they are once again starving for a new game today, so might be a good time to give them some hope. But now... Snake. Snake? Snake... Mm, uh, ooh, um... Yeah, I know he's another huge famous video game icon, and he was one of the first two guest characters in Smash, so he is important to the legacy of this series. But I never felt like he fit the tone of Smash all that well, and he has very little connection to Nintendo, and he was mostly included because Kojima won him in the game, and Kojima is no longer connected to Konami. So, yeah, I'd be okay with leaving him out. Speaking of Konami, I love that Simon Belmont and Richter Belmont got added, and the Castlevania stage is one of my favorites in the entire game. But if I have to make hard cuts, yeah, I'm going to take them out. I'll try to put some Castlevania love back into the game later on, but for now, they can go. Next up, Ryu and Ken. This is a fighting game crossover. Ryu is Mr. Fighting Game. If you can only have one character out there that you can point at and say they are the representative for the entire fighting game genre, it's Ryu. But we don't need Ryu and Ken, so Ken's cut. And while we're at, let's cover the other two fighting game characters, Terry and Kazuya. Love Terry, love Kazuya, SNK and Tekken are legends of the video game world, and I love that they got included in the last game. But I also understand that the vast majority of Smash's player base had zero idea who these characters were, so yeah, they can go. Then Cloud. Final Fantasy isn't just a massive video game franchise. If you had to pick one video game franchise to be the face of RPGs, it's probably going to be Final Fantasy. And if you had to pick one character to be the face of Final Fantasy, it's probably going to be Cloud. Keep. But then we come to Sephiroth. He's one of the biggest video game villains of all time but we have to make hard cuts. And if we got Cloud, I don't think we need a second Final Fantasy character. He can be cut. Sticking with RPG characters, Hero. Hero's a keep. I'll admit I'm not the biggest Dragon Quest fan, only played a few of them. However, in Japan, Dragon Quest is a religion. When a new Dragon Quest game comes out, it's treated like a national holiday because they know nobody is going to show up for work anyways. So because this franchise is so big, because it's so important to the history of video games, and because it is such a legend for the genre, Hero stays. Next up, Joker. Listen, even though this channel is dedicated mostly to fighting games, Persona is my favorite video game franchise. I know that's shocking for some of y'all, but it's true, I love these games, and I was fighting hard for Joker to get into Smash, and when that trailer for his reveal played at the Game Awards, I damn near cried. <laughs> But that being said, yeah, it's amazing that he got added. I love seeing him in there, but it was a nice one-time thing. We don't need to bring him back more than that. Plus, he was mostly included to be the representative of the new hotness, that character who is here to represent new cool games. His game is seven or eight years old now. He's no longer the new hotness. He's cut. Then there's Banjo. I know he's pretty low tier in Smash Ultimate, but people fought hard to get him into this game for years. I'm not going to cut him now. Speaking of Microsoft characters, Steve. 
I know a ton of older Smash fans looked at this character and thought he was a bad choice, but everyone else on the planet went nuts for him. Minecraft is the biggest game in the world, and when Steve got added to Smash, he literally broke the internet, and yes, I'm using literally correctly there. Twitter actually crashed after his announcement, and remember, this was back before it was being run by the dumbest Three Stooges brother who breaks it every single month. No, this was back when the site actually functioned, so that's saying something. So yeah, he gets to stay. And I know someone is going to say, but Steve is so broken, he was banned from competitive play. First off, this is a brand new game, we can always rebalance these characters and make them more playable. And secondly, if you're worried about this game's competitive scene, it's Smash. Nintendo is already going to do everything in their power to wreck it no matter who's in this roster. Might as well try and have fun with it. And the final character, Sora. Listen, if we're talking realistically, there is no way in hell Sora is returning for another Smash Bros. It's a miracle that he got in here at all. The legal hoops that Sakurai had to jump through is stunning. There is no way we would be able to pull something like that off again. But... If he could come back. If. He. Could. If there was some crazy clause in the contract that Sakurai managed to sneak past Disney that said that he can forever return for all future smashes, no question asked, then we have to bring him back. Again, it is insane to me that he got in here at all, and Sakurai even revealed that in Smash 4, when they held a poll to see who people wanted in the game, he was number one. By the way, I love that Sakurai just revealed that because every single time that a new Smash character gets added, there's always someone on the internet screaming, who wanted this character? So I have to give major props to Sakurai that he started the announcement off with, you did, all of you did. I have the numbers, I have the cold hard results, I know you're all going to complain about this no matter what, so I'm letting you all know right now, I'm not falling for it. I know for a fact you wanted him in this game. So we got a character who was impossible to get and yet somehow they made it happen. And everyone wanted him in here. If there was any chance we could make this happen again, you would be crazy to cut him. So yeah, if everyone from the last game is still on the table, he's definitely a keep. And that leaves us with exactly 42 keeps and 42 cuts. I know it may not look like that, but that's just because everyone with a massive football head wound up on the cut side and that just screwed up the symmetry of this whole thing. But trust me, it's even. Everyone happy with the cuts? Because I know I'm not. Yeah, some of these cuts were easy, but some of them were rough. In fact, you know what, I'm just going to issue a blanket-wide I'm sorry statement because I'm sure that there's at least one cut that everyone hated to see. But now, we have the real meat of today's episode. I now have to fill in all these blank spots. In total, we have 31 full Nintendo characters, 3 Echo Nintendo characters, 6 full guest characters, and 2 Echo guest characters. And I'm just going to clarify something right here. If a character got cut, and then I throw in another character from the same series, that is not me saying, this new character is better than that old character, or this new character deserves to be in the game more than that old character. No, that's just the way that the rules of this challenge worked out. So, let's see who could possibly fill in these spots as we move into... I feel like for this one I could just say, just do it, and then move on, but no, let's actually go ahead and talk about this. Waluigi has been probably the most requested Nintendo character for Smash for a long time now, and I'll admit I've never been in the Waluigi for Smash camp. In fact, I'm not even sure if people genuinely mean it or if this was just a giant meme that got out of hand. But either way, people have been asking for him for long enough that it feels like it's time to make it real. And as for how he'd fight, remember what I said about Daisy and how I'd love for her to be a representative for the Mario Sports games? Well, Waluigi was made specifically for the Mario Sports games, and it's been pretty much the only place he's existed over the decades. So if Daisy is cut and I can't have her be the representative for the sports games, 
That honor definitely falls to Waluigi. Have him smack you with a tennis racket, kick a soccer ball at you, swing a golf club. This guy could be a one-man dick sporting goods. We got rid of one Mario spinoff, we should probably replace it with another. Although, unlike Dr. Mario, Paper Mario wouldn't be an Echo Fighter in disguise. He would be an actual, completely original character. He could have an up special where he turns into a paper airplane to fly back onto the stage. His parry animation could be him turning to the side to become two-dimensional. That hammer wind-up animation is born to be a forward smash animation. And he could summon out all of his friends from Thousand Year Door for his big final smash where they all do some turn-based damage to the opponent. This character would be loaded with so many references and flavor, and considering that Thousand Year Door is getting a remaster, yeah, why not include him? Mario's original girlfriend, and now the mayor of New Dong City, Pauline became a huge hit after Mario Odyssey, so I feel like that's enough to get her into this roster. You could easily give her lots of musical-based attacks, or maybe even let her kick around some old 8-bit pixel barrels to be a reference to her appearance in the original Donkey Kong. And of course, her big final smash has to be her pulling off a huge musical number where her band blows the opponent away. It feels like every member of the core Mario family has gotten a chance to be in Smash, except for Toad. And I understand, he was always a very supporting character in the series, he never really stood out all that much. In fact, I'm not entirely sure if there is one single Toad, or if that's just the name for all the Toadstool people. But then he eventually got his own series, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. So it felt like he would be a shoo-in for the series after that, but there was one small problem. This is a platform fighter, meaning you have to jump. And part of Captain Toad's gimmick is that he can't jump. This is a puzzle game where you have to figure out how to maneuver around a map without jumping. So he couldn't really work in this game. But honestly, I think we can smudge the details a bit here. We can take some liberties. Give us a trailer for his announcement that shows him discovering some shoes with springs in them, or we give him like a little helicopter propeller that comes out of his backpack and lets him fly up a little bit. Or maybe you take the giant bird that he fights at the end of his game, and then you have like a tiny chick version of it, and that's seen in his backpack, and whenever he wants to jump, the bird just comes out and lifts him up into the air. There are totally ways to make this work, and considering that Toad is the last member of the Mario crew to be in this series, we should find a way to make it work. Just do it. Okay, okay, I'll say a little bit more. Gino is second only to Waluigi in terms of Nintendo characters everyone has won in this game, but I've always found that request to be kind of out there because, sure, Super Mario RPG was super popular back in the day. But that day was a long, long time ago, and Gino hasn't returned except for one quick cameo that most people don't even know about. Plus, there were all these questions going around about does Nintendo fully own Gino since Square made the game, so yeah, it just felt like Gino was a choice that might not have been as obvious as some people thought it was. But Super Mario RPG just got a remake, so that kind of addresses both of those problems. He's back in the public eye, and it's clear that Nintendo has full access to him. So you mix that with the fact that fans have been asking for him for decades now, yeah, go ahead and include him. So that's it for the Mario characters, so let's move on to the next Nintendo superstar, Pokemon. Okay, some people are probably on board with this, and some people are probably confused. So far, the only Pokemon characters who have been included in Smash are the actual Pokemon themselves. Which makes sense, they're the ones that do the actual fighting. But this franchise is full of trainers that the fanbase loves, and I want to see some of them get added to the roster. And the first one that I have to include is Cynthia, easily one of the coolest Pokemon champions of all time. She's got a great style, she uses a Garchomp, I don't think I need to go on. Those two things alone get you into this game. But how would she fight? Well, there's two options here. 
Either we could give her some basic punches and kick animations for her normal attacks, but then for all of her specials and smash moves, she would quickly summon out one of her Pokemon to deliver the attack for her and then quickly summon them back into her Pokeball, making for some really cool visuals of her swapping her partners in and out as she does her combos. Or we could just have her be like the Pokemon train her and have her stand in the background and then we pick three of her Pokemon and have her just swap in between those. Listen, if I'm throwing one Pokemon human into this game, I have to include another, otherwise it would just feel weird. And if you want to talk about one element of Pokemon that has stuck around for all these years, it's Team Rocket. Each game gets a brand new villain team, but anytime that there's some kind of a spin-off game, or a show, or a mobile game, Team Rocket is always front and center as the bad guys. Plus, I'm always in favor of including more villains in these rosters, so let's include the leader of Team Rocket, Giovanni. Again, he could either fight in the background like the Pokemon trainer sending out his Pokemon to do the fighting for him, or he could actually get into the battle and summon out Pokemon on the fly for each of his moves, which I think fits Giovanni pretty well because if there's any Pokemon trainer I could see actually kicking these fighters off of a ledge, it's the literal mob boss. And as for his big final smash, we could have him sick a whole bunch of his Team Rocket goons on the opponent as they all dogpile on him, and then as they're all in some big comedic smoke cloud of fighting, you could have one single Meowth come right out there and jump onto the pile, just as a nice little reference. Speaking of cat-like Pokemon... Okay, I needed to add at least one actual Pokemon, and we should probably make it one from the newest game to represent the latest generation. And I've seen multiple polls saying that out of the three starters, Meowskareta is the most popular, so they would make sense. But even if they weren't the most popular, I would still be arguing for their inclusion, simply because when you look at all the Pokemon who have been in Smash, we got Incineroar, a fire starter, we got Charizard as his own fighter, another fire starter, and we got Greninja, a water starter. Grass is the only starter type not yet represented in their own slot in this roster. And for probably the first time ever, the grass type is actually the most popular, so yeah, we have to include them. And speaking of tiny cat-like creatures that we could throw into this game... Time to move into the Zelda characters, and for years now, whenever people have asked me what Zelda character I want add to Smash, my answer has always been Midna. I know that now Twilight Princess has become a bit forgettable, but everyone still remembers Midna. She's got a great personality, her giant arm hair helmet thing would be perfect for long range strikes and for reaching up to grab the ledge when she's falling off. And she would ride around on Wolf Link, which I just think would look cool. You tell me there's a way to put a character who rides a wolf into a game, I'm going to take it. For years now, whenever people have asked me what Zelda character I want add to Smash, my answer has always been Majora. Yes, I know I said the same thing about Midna, but my answer always changes back and forth because I'm incredibly indecisive. This probably isn't the best show for someone like me to host. Majora's Mask came out a long time ago, but over the years, I've seen the audience for it continue to grow as people have reevaluated and begun praising it for all that it accomplished. And one of the things I always loved about this game was that for once, we got a mainline Zelda game where Ganon wasn't the villain. Majora is such a unique new threat for the Zelda franchise, and I think that his creepy, playful nature and wide range of powers would make for a great fighter. And his final smash has to be him bringing the moon down and destroying the stage. That is so perfect for a final smash, they went ahead and put it in the game anyways, despite not having a character attached to it. And for the last Zelda character, I want to get one fighter in here from the most recent games. In other words, from the Breath of the Wild series. So, I figured one of the four champions would be best, and out of these four, Daruk seemed too big and tanky for a platform fighter, Mifa seems more like a healer than a fighter to me, Rivali would actually work great because he can fly so he could easily get back up onto the stage, but he might work a little too well, he might actually be broken with all of his air maneuverability. So Urboza seemed like the best answer, she's a strong fighter and her stats seem like they would be pretty evenly balanced, Plus, she's got lightning powers, meaning out of all four of these characters, she would have some of the most flashy attacks. No pun intended. 
And if you're upset that we're not picking any of the other Guardians, don't worry, we could easily fit them in here in some of her moves. Her up special would have to be Revali, giving her a boost of wind to send her flying back up onto the stage. Her forward special could be Daruk coming in there and making a big swing. So yeah, even though I'm picking Urbosa, this spot is really reserved for all four of the Guardians together. Alright, time for the Fire Emblem characters. I've got three lined up, and before anyone says that's too many, I cut six from the main roster, adding three back in is more than fair. However, over the past few Smash installments, all the new Fire Emblem characters have always been from the most recent games. Which makes sense, Smash does help to promote these franchises, so you might as well promote the most recent games. But since we cut so many classic Fire Emblem fighters, we should include at least one older character. Now I'll admit, my knowledge of Fire Emblem games that came out more than a decade ago start to get a little bit foggy, but I do know that Lynn is a major important player in the franchise. She was one of the protagonists of the first Fire Emblem game to come to America, and she's even been in multiple Smash games already as assist trophies, so yeah, I'd say she's a good fit. As I said, typically whenever a new Fire Emblem character gets added to Smash, it's whoever is the newest character. So yeah, why break that tradition now? Let's bring in the protag of the latest Fire Emblem, Alir. And here's the good thing about their inclusion. Since they have the power to call upon Fire Emblem heroes from the past, that means we can sneak in here all the other Fire Emblem characters that we had to cut. Have all of them be spirits helping Alier out in the fight. Let them cycle through these spirits, kind of like Shulk can do with the Minato, where every single one of these spirits will give them a different kind of buff. And if you want to go one step beyond that, let's say that whenever Alir does their final smash, whatever spirit they currently have equipped would appear in their final smash animation fighting alongside them. It wouldn't necessarily change the final smash itself, but would be a nice little bit of flavor to throw in there, something just to spice them up and make them feel different. This third slot was a tough call. I wanted to put a Three Houses character in here, but Violet was already cut, and that means it would come down to one of the Three House Leaders, and how can I choose which one deserves to be in here the most? My vote would have been for Claude, but even I'll admit, out of those Three House Leaders, he's probably the least important to the plot. And I'm not going to choose between Dimitri or Edelgard because I do not want to start that fight in the comments. But then I remembered Anna. Yeah, if we can't get one character to represent three houses, let's get a character to represent Fire Emblem as a whole. For anyone not familiar with her, Anna is essentially the Sid of the Fire Emblem franchise. There has been a version of Anna in every Fire Emblem game since 1992. So if there is one character who feels like a good face for this series, it's her. Granted, she doesn't fight in a lot of these games, she's typically the merchant, but she has fought in some of them before, and we could get creative with this and give her some moves where she knocks coins out of the enemy and then picks them up, or give her some kind of a weird luck-based power that's a reference to her role in the gacha mobile game Fire Emblem Heroes, and she can randomly call upon another Fire Emblem character to come out and attack. Sort of like she has her own set of Fire Emblem assist trophies. Even when I cut the Fire Emblem fighters in half, I still find a way to fill this game with Fire Emblem. Although I should probably stop now before we drown this game in swords, so let's move on to something completely different with... Yes, it's time to cover the Donkey Kong Bunch. We got rid of two and I'm adding two back in there, and first up I'm going to include Dixie Kong. She was the star of Donkey Kong Country 3, which I have heard a fair number of people say is the best of the DK Country games, and it feels like if we're getting rid of Diddy Kong, then we should replace him with someone around the same size, same weight, same level of agility. She wouldn't have his peanut pop guns, but we could give her a move where Kitty Kong runs out and punches across the stage for some kind of a ranged attack, and Dixie would probably have a better stage recovery than Diddy because we would replace his barrel blast with Dixie's hair twirl, which would allow her to fly a good distance to get back onto the platform. Okay, I'll admit, I'm mostly picking this one because if this got announced, I would love to see people making mock-ups of the game cover with the now including Funky Mode sticker. Now, in full disclosure, I almost made Funky an Echo Fighter because I can totally see him having some moves in common with DK, but he's got just enough originality that I feel like we could make him a fully fleshed out character, and a lot of that would be because of his surfboard. Let him use it as his side special to surf across the stage, or use it as his up special to hop off the board and get some air. And if you want to put a really weird reference in here, for his final smash, 
Have him put on some camo and pull out a ton of wooden weapons to reference his appearance in Donkey Kong 64. I've always wondered what the heck was up with that, by the way. Funky went through a weird, dark phase in the late 90s. We have to include some more Splatoon characters. It's been one of Nintendo's biggest successes over the past- You know what, why am I even doing this? You all know why Splatoon is in here! But picking who to include was rough, because all three Splatoons have had one group of breakout characters. The host of the Inkopolis News. So I had to include one of these duos. But who to include? Kelly and Mari were the iconic original hosts, but then off the hook, the duo of Pearl and Marina were big fan favorites from the second game, and the trio of Deep Cuts is the current host of the third game, so we would get some good promotion out of it, but I had to pick one of them. Until I realized... No I don't, because this is Smash Bros, and we've got Echo Fighters! Yeah, let's include Callie and Mari as a two-person team, sort of like the Ice Climbers, except low with musical and paint-based attacks, but then put Pearl and Marina in there as their Echo Fighters. Sadly, I can't squeeze Deep Cuts in here since there's three members of their squad, but maybe we could fit them in here as an assist trophy. I think Splatoon fans would be pretty happy if they picked up an assist trophy and Shiver and Fry hopped out riding across the stage on top of Big Man. And you know what, seeing as how we have now brought up Echo Fighters, we still have two more that we need to get to, so let's go ahead and tackle them right now. First up, Animal Crossing is big for Nintendo, so we should put in here a new character, but very few characters have enough variety to them for us to justify giving them an entire original moveset. So, let's go with Tom Nook and give him half of Villager's moves and half of Isabel's moves. And maybe we could clear up enough room to give him one unique move, like maybe he drops a bag of money onto the stage, and if anyone picks it up, then they'll temporarily be slowed down, implying they're being weighed down by their debt. Then we can throw Jean in here as an Echo Fire for Bayonetta. I know someone is going to say that Bayo counts as a guest character, but again, I already laid that out. Nintendo helps to fund these games, they're Nintendo exclusive, she counts as a Nintendo character. So there are your three Nintendo Echo Fighters, let's get back to the main roster. We need to include some more Xenoblade references, because over the past few years, this franchise has gone from a tiny niche title that we have to beg Nintendo for a port of, to being a juggernaut. It's not just one of the most highly acclaimed modern day RPGs, I'd be willing to say it's now one of the current pillars for Nintendo. It's now one of those titles that Nintendo proudly dedicates time to showing off. So I wanted to include a character from Xenoblades 3, and I was torn between Noah and Mio. Noah is the obvious choice, but I've never been the biggest fan of just throwing in here an obvious choice simply because they're obvious. But then I thought, you know, Pyra and Mithra were both merged together into the same character. Granted, they had lore reasons to be that way, but you could kind of argue the same for Noah and Mio. Yeah, to put it very simply, Noah and Mio are sort of bonded together, so here's my idea. Make Noah and Mio another character that can swap between each other. Except here's how it would be unique. When you're Noah, your side special would involve summoning out Mio to attack. And then when Mio is out there, your side special would involve summoning out Noah to attack. Why would you do this? Because when you summon them out for these attacks, you would still be able to move around while your assist is setting up their attack. In Xenoblade, you control one member of your party at a time, while the rest of the team is sort of on autopilot, so you have to figure out what you should do in order to play off what the computer-controlled characters are doing. So this would be my way of trying to incorporate that into this game. You control Noah while Mio is auto-attacking, or vice versa, which would also allow you to set up some really interesting combos or mix up your opponent in a variety of ways. But the other reason I'm putting the two of them together is because in the game, they have a super form they can go into by merging together. So, making these two characters count as one fighter in the roster would be an excellent excuse to turn that into their final smash, with this Ouroboros form being different depending on whether or not you're playing as Noah or Mio when you activate it. Okay, that's probably the most complicated character in this roster, so for anyone who thought I was going through these characters way too quickly, I hope you enjoy that. Now back to going through these characters way too quickly. Rex, this one is fairly self-explanatory. We should have more than just one new Xenoblade representative. People won Rex in the last game, but they couldn't get him in here in time. 
And last year, a new DLC dropped for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that now featured a grown-up super buff Rex, and I have heard Xenoblade fans calling that DLC a masterpiece. So, if we include that version of Rex, then not only do we get the character people wanted, but we also get some nice synergy working off the latest release in the Xenoblade franchise. It works on pretty much every level, so let's go ahead and do it. Now, Xenoblade was the last franchise we're going to be tackling with more than one character, so that means we're about to start throwing out a bunch of weird and wild candidates from all over the place back to back. Starting with... We need another Kirby representative in here. It's one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, and considering that it gets brand new games and re-releases so quickly, I'm sure another one will get announced before I finish this sentence. Yeah, let's go ahead and add another fighter in here. And I was very tempted to go with any of the various villains from the franchise, since I see a lot of love for them all over the fanbase. I was particularly leaning towards Magalore, since they recently put out Dreamland Deluxe, which includes some brand new levels that featured Magalore as a playable character, but over the years, there is one Kirby character I have seen fans asking for more than any other. What? No, don't be ridiculous. Hey, there he is! Yeah, Kirby fans love Bandana Waddle Dee, and he's been in a metric ton of games. In fact, at this point, it's probably easier to list off the Kirby games he isn't in. Plus, he's got a spear for some good range normals, and he's even been in multiple Kirby-themed fighting games, so we already have a good idea of what his moveset would be. Side note, how the heck are there multiple Kirby-themed fighting games? Black Shadow. Alright, I'm making a bit of a reach here, but I mentioned earlier that Captain Falcon Bean in Smash Bros. has done more for F-Zero than the actual F-Zero games. And over time, we've heard the cry for a new F-Zero game growing and growing with each passing year. Like, it's getting to that point where people are tired of waiting and they want answers. In fact, I mean that literally. Someone actually bought stocks in Nintendo just so they could go to the shareholders meeting and ask them about a new F-Zero game. That actually happened! That's real! So you know what? I believe if the next Smash Bros. add a brand new F-Zero character, they would probably be the most talked about character in that starting roster, at least out of all the Nintendo characters. People would lose their mind if suddenly there was someone new from F-Zero in this game. And hey, they put all that F-Zero Battle Royale game, so for the first time in decades, Nintendo is actually paying attention to the series. So, let's make it happen. And out of all the other racers, I'm going to go with the big baddie, Black Shadow. How would he play? Doesn't matter. Captain Falcon's moveset in Smash is 100% original to Smash, and everyone is cool with that. So just get creative. Give him some attacks that match his big overwhelming presence, making him a heavy hitter along the same lines as Ganondorf or Bowser or any of the other big villains in this series, and you're good. In fact, speaking of big villains we could add, After years of being dormant and Metroid Prime 4 being left on the side of milk cartons, the Metroid series has come roaring back with the Metroid Prime Remaster, and more importantly, the long-awaited release of Metroid Dread. And this not only re-energized older Metroid fans, but also created a brand new audience that fell in love with Samus and her space bounty hunting adventures. So let's throw in here the big bad of that game, Raven's Beak. And if you saw his final boss fight, you can pretty much imagine how he would fight. There was no shortage of moves that we could pull from that game, and he definitely showed off a good bit of agility that could definitely come in handy in a platform fighter. In fact, if they decide to bring unique boss fights back for the next Smash Bros, I was seriously thinking about leaving Raven's Beak off this roster so we could save him for that. But nah, if there's gonna be one Metroid character that we save for a boss fight, it's gotta be Kraid. You have to jump on platforms in order to fight him, and he's way too big for the regular roster. Wait, did I just say that a Metroid character was too big for this roster? Oh god, this is weird, this must be how Sakurai felt. Uh, let's ignore the boss fights for now and just move on to the rest of the roster. The Rescue Corps. Alright, I know that we cut Ulmar and I admitted that it seemed crazy since Pikmin is so beloved and they got a brand new game last year and all the fans went nuts for it. But I wanted to get a representative from that game in here, and I realized that they would share a lot of moves in common with Olimar, but Olimar is not popular enough in Smash to justify giving us a brand new version of Olimar, whether that be a full-on Echo Fighter or just another fighter who has some similar moves. So let's include your playable character from Pikmin 3 in here, who doesn't actually have a name. 
but they're a member of the Rescue Corps, so let's just call them the Rescue Corps. And like the Inklings or the Villager, this will be one of those spots where every color is a different character design. Heck, maybe one of them could even be Olimar, or one of them could be one of the other characters, like Alf or Brittany. And they would share similarities with Olimar, but we could still spice up their gameplay by giving them some of the new Pikmin from Pikmin 3 to throw out there, or you could summon out your new doggo friend for an attack. <laughs> Twintel. I know that ARMS failed to take off beyond just being a quirky, unique little title for Switch's launch, but I still feel like it's a super fun game with a really unique cast of characters with some great designs. So yeah, let's go ahead and include another one of them. Now, part of me thinks that we should include multiple characters, all as different skins, because since you can swap weapons in and out between your characters in this game, it means that you could justify having multiple characters all in one slot, because when you get right down to it, they could all kind of fight the same. Except that wouldn't work for all the arms fighters. Some of them are just too unique, so you couldn't make them different skins. And wouldn't you know it, one of those characters happens to be the most popular one in the entire game. Yes, Twintel was easily the most talked about character when this game came out, and yes, we all know why that is, but it's not important. What's important is that if you want to get people even remotely interested in a new fighter from ARMS, it needs to be the most popular character. Now, let me go ahead and say, I'm actually okay with her not being in Smash Ultimate, simply because she didn't actually fight with her ARMS. And I kind of feel like your first representative from ARMS should, you know, use their ARMS. But we already got Min Min in the last game, so now I feel like everyone is on the table, so yeah, let's go ahead and include the most popular character. <laughs> Ashley. We got Wario in this game, and Wario has two franchises under his belt. One of which Nintendo has all but forgotten about, and the other one they continue to support. Well, I say we take Wario and keep him mostly focused towards the Wario Land game and we bring Ashley in here, and she becomes the representative for the WarioWare games. She's got some magical attacks that we could bring out, but for many of her specials, she could bring out some of the other WarioWare characters, or trap the opponent in some kind of a mini-game that they have to figure their way out of. She would easily be one of the trickiest characters in the entire game to learn, but she would also be one of the trickiest characters to go up against, because when I think of a representative from WarioWare, I think of someone who wouldn't be afraid to get weird. All right, that is it for the characters from series that have already been in Smash. So let's start putting some new Nintendo faces into this roster. Although admittedly, that's going to be kind of hard because holy cow, have you seen how many characters are already in this thing? But there's still a few corners of Nintendo's library that have not been pulled from just yet. Okay, I'm going to start this off by saying, I will admit, I do not know a whole lot about Chibi-Robo. But I do know that Chibi-Robo fans are angry at Nintendo, so I'm guessing it's a good series that has mostly been ignored over the past couple years or has been done dirty in the most recent installments, and I'm guessing that this little robot popping up in Smash would be a nice way to put out some of those fires. Plus, considering how many tools Chibi-Robo can use in those games, they would have a ton of possible moves that we could pull from. Imagine having an attack where they pull out a toothbrush and just start scrubbing the floor. Doesn't sound like much, but if you do that at the edge, it would be an amazing way of keeping the opponent from being able to get back up onto the stage. Or you could use that zipline of theirs to reach up and grab onto the stage like a grappling hook when you're about to fall off. I mean, the Chibi Robo fans love the zipline. At least I assume they do. I hear them talking about it all the time, but I don't pay attention to the context. My point is, I'd say that out of all the franchises being published by Nintendo that haven't been in Smash so far, Chibi Robo not only has the dedicated audience, but also the moveset potential to be a perfect inclusion. Advance Wars was a really fascinating strategy game that Nintendo put out almost two decades ago, but after all this time, they finally got a moment in the spotlight again just last year. Granted, it was overshadowed by some rather uncomfortable real-world stuff, but hey, it's Advance Wars that's actually kind of par for the course for this series. So let's include one of the characters from there, and Andy is the face of the series, so he's the obvious choice, and I know I said earlier that I'm not always the biggest fan of including the obvious choice just because they're the obvious choice, but Advance Wars doesn't have an audience big enough for us to pull out the obscure grabs, so Andy's in. 
Let's give him the ability to summon out little tanks or planes that would slowly make their way across the stage or launch attacks from afar as he gets to keep running around and attacking the opponent with his big wrench. He'd be a character with tons of crazy potential. As long as you can think five steps ahead when you're trying to figure out where to place your tanks and thinking about how long it'll take them to fire or how long it'll take them to move. In other words, he'd be perfect for people who play strategy games. Isaac. I loved Golden Sun when I was a kid. It was one of my first exposures to the RPG genre, and currently nostalgia levels for that game are as high as they are ever going to get. So let's throw that fan base a bone and put Isaac in here. He was already in Smash Ultimate as an assist trophy where he could push the opponent off the stage, so we've already got a good idea of what his side special would be. And as for his other moves, Golden Sun has no shortage of crazy big explosive magical attacks that I would love to see him use, but maybe to give him some variety. Every single one of his normal specials would have two different versions. You use the attack as it is, and the normal version of the attack would come out. But let's say that his down special would call on one of the djinns to come in there and power him up. And then after you're powered up, your next special would be a bigger, more powerful version of that move. This would be a great way to incorporate some of the unique mechanics from Golden Sun, but would also be a good way to keep Isaac from just being another RPG guy. This would actually make him stand out and be different. Starfy. This might seem like an odd choice because a lot of people only know of the legendary Starfy for the DS, but that's just because that's the only Starfy game that ever left Japan. Before that game's release, there were four other Starfy games, meaning Starfy has more games under his belt than like half the characters in this roster. And while I'll admit I've never played any of these games myself, I do know they're a widely applauded platformer series. And while spinning and jumping is the majority of Starfy's moveset, he does have a pretty big group of friends, and he could use them to give him unique specials, including turning him into... whatever this is. I mean, that looks like a whole moveset right there by itself, I don't think I have to explain anything else. Saki Amamiya Coming up next in the long list of games that have diehard fan bases, yet I don't know anything about them, Sin and Punishment. This is one of the most critically acclaimed rail shooters in history, and just like Golden Sun, it did recently come to the Switch's digital library. That means there's finally a way to legally play it again. So let's go ahead and help promote this series a little bit more by adding the protagonist of the first game, Saki Amamiya. Since he's from a rail shooter, Saki would obviously be a zoner with a wide variety of rapid-fire blast attacks. Also, there's a moment in the game where you swap control between Saki and another character, Iron Joe. And from what I can tell from watching gameplay footage, she appears to play very similar to Saki. Well, Zen Punishment isn't big enough for Saki to get an Echo Fighter, but maybe we could make half of Saki's skins Iron. I'd like to remind the Sin Punishment fans that I know nothing about this franchise other than what I researched for this video, so if I'm way off on assuming that they would play similar, then I apologize. And I also apologize because I'm 90% sure I mispronounced Iron Joe. And for the last new Nintendo character, people love Rhythm Heaven. And I don't mean like people love Sin and Punishment and people love Chibi Robo. No, all of these franchises that I have listed off have fans, but Rhythm Heaven has fans that live and breathe this series. But it is just a series of mini-games, so it's kind of hard to fit into a fighting game. Is what I would have said, except we already include Ashley to represent WarioWare, so screw it, we already crossed that line, why back off now? And as for which character should represent the series, I know a lot of fans were asking for the Choir Kids back when Smash Ultimate was coming out, but come on. It's a fighting game. And this is Karate Joe. He's an actual fighter, we know what his punches look like, we know what his kicks look like, he's the obvious choice. But, just like I mentioned with Ashley, for each of his specials, he could summon out some of the other characters from the various minigames. Also for his win pose, it has to be him getting interviewed by the girl from the ringside game. And so, we are now through with all the new Nintendo characters, which leaves us with eight new guest characters, two of whom have to be Echo Fighters. Now, I know it would be easy to just pick the eight biggest video game characters that I can think of and call it a day, and considering what Smash Bros has turned into, yeah, that's actually a realistic option at this point. Literally nobody is off limits anymore. But you know me, that's not fun to just list off a bunch of characters that are popular. 
No, I'm going to challenge myself to pick characters who I feel have some kind of a connection to Nintendo, or to other characters in Smash Bros, or they fill some kind of a role that I feel needs to be represented in this game. For example, I love Dante, I know people want him to be in Smash Ultimate, but Devil May Cry has next to nothing to do with Nintendo, and if you're looking for someone to represent character action games, we already got Bayonetta in here, so I'm going to hold off on him. Everyone understand? No? Great, let's get to it. Shovel Knight! I've said before, and I'll say it until it finally happens, Smash Bros. represents almost every corner of gaming with its roster, but it needs someone to be the face of indie games. And even after all these years, that face is Shovel Knight. But even beyond just being one of the biggest breakout indie characters of all time, Shovel Knight also has some connections to Nintendo. When his game was originally coming out, Yacht Club Games and Nintendo worked closely with each other in order to advertise Shovel Knight for the Wii U. So much so, he became one of the only third-party characters to get an amiibo. And the connection between Shovel Knight and Nintendo didn't stop there as he even became an assist trophy in Smash Ultimate. So it's time that we finally turn him into a real fighter. For his neutral special, he could dig into the ground and kick up some jewels they send across the stage to hit the opponent. For his down special, he could pogo off the opponent's head. For his up special, Shield Knight could appear and give him a boost to send him flying into the air. I could keep going, but it's clear Shovel Knight would have a full moveset that would fit perfectly into this game, and people have won Shovel Knight in Smash so bad that other fighting games have already grabbed him up, so let's go ahead and make it happen. Okay, this one feels like an obvious choice to me, but I'll probably still have to defend it a bit. Since Smash Bros. is a fighting game crossover, I feel like we should include some more fighting game characters, especially since I got rid of three of them. And so far, this series has represented Street Fighter, Tekken, Virtual Fighter with an assist trophy, and pretty much all of SNK. So when it comes to a new fighter, I know a ton of people out there want Scorpion or Sub-Zero since they're the face of Mortal Kombat, or Soul Bad Guy since he represents Guilty Gear and to an extent all of Arc System works. And I totally get that, I think that all three of those are great choices. But Chun-Li to me feels like one of the most important fighting game characters ever. She's literally called the First Lady of Fighting Games, and she's an icon, and when people think of fighting game characters, I'd say she comes up more than any of those other characters, in fact she might even come up more often than Ryu. So yeah, I know that people are going to argue that I shouldn't be doubling up on Street Fighter characters when there's so many other franchises that haven't been represented yet, but I think Chun-Li is so important to this entire genre that it's warranted. And I would also say that compared to, say, Scorpion or Sub-Zero, she fits the tone of Smash Bros. far better. Uh, remember what I said about tone for later in this video when I completely ignore that. Soma Cruz. Again, another choice I'm sure some people are going to be arguing about, but Castlevania is such an iconic series, and a series that was important to Nintendo's early days, that I felt bad removing its two representatives. But as I said earlier, we had to make some tough cuts, and when it comes to Castlevania, there's tons of other popular characters that we could put in here as that series representative. And if we're talking about the most popular character to represent this entire series, it's Alucard. But Alucard has practically nothing to do with Nintendo. He was one of the playable characters in Castlevania 3, and that's about it. However, during the days of the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS, Castlevania saw an explosion on these Nintendo handhelds. There were multiple games coming out for these consoles, which many fans call some of the best in the entire series. So if we want to talk about a Castlevania representative who was important to Nintendo, I've got to go with Soma Cruz the star of Aria of Sorrow and Dawn of Sorrow, two games that, to me, were kind of the face of this handheld Castlevania revolution. And the best part is, we could totally just take the gun animation from Joker and just carry it on over to Soma. I'm totally kidding about that, by the way. Soma has like 20 or 30 weapons in his game. We're probably not going to use the gun. Shantae. This is another character who I almost always see topping the charge when people ask who should be in Smash. I know I've said a thousand times now about other characters, but yes, Shantae is a huge fan favorite character. Her fan base is outspoken and has been pushing for her to be in this game for a while. 
In fact, she even got Sprite in the last game. And when you look at all the stats, I think Shonday actually is a perfect fit for Smash. She has a long line of games, with the first one being on the Game Boy Color, so she has a connection to Nintendo, and she's a platform character, so she would transfer perfectly into a platform fighter. So yeah, let's get her in this game, and make sure to give her a stage loaded with personality. The world of her games is full of so much life and color and energy, and she's got so many supporting characters, we would have to fit all of that into a stage. It's the perfect place to set a fight. Phoenix Wright. I know I'm doubling up on Capcom guests, but thanks to all the re-releases that Phoenix Wright has recently gotten, that character has exploded for a brand new generation of players, and he got his start all the way back on the Game Boy Advance. This beloved series went through its entire lifespan, over 10 games, both mainstream and spin-offs, all on Nintendo hardware. So we've got an iconic video game character, with a large resume under his belt, who is suddenly popular again, and his entire history up until the re-releases were all Nintendo exclusive. Yeah, he was born for this roster. And he's even been in a fighting game before. We all remember him in Marvel vs. Capcom, but he was so unique in there, with each of his attacks being references to how his game plays, which is kind of how Smash characters are designed. Yeah, almost none of his moves in Marvel are actual attacks. They're just references to how the Phoenix Wright games play. And I can say that about so many of the characters in Smash Bros, so we could transfer that moveset directly into Smash. In fact, Phoenix Wright makes so much sense for this roster, I'm going to give him one of our two Echo characters. That's right, we're throwing in there his chief rival, Miles Edgeworth. Since Phoenix Wright is a defense attorney and Edgeworth is a prosecutor, I feel like this is an obvious balance change. Edgeworth has higher attack, Phoenix Wright has higher defense. Easy. Done. Meaning we only have one other Echo Fire to cover, so let's go ahead and tackle them now. Shadow. Feels like we should include another Sonic character in here, he's one of the biggest video game icons of all. Wait, am I really about to explain Sonic? You all know Sonic! You all know he's big! You all know he has a legendary history with Nintendo, and thanks to all of his movies and the never-ending flood of games, he's bigger now than he's been in decades. And even though Tails or Knuckles or Dr. Eggman would make a ton of sense, we need an Echo Fighter, and Shadow would work just fine for that. And he's going to be in the movie that's coming out later this year, so yeah, there's no other choice here. He could play exactly the same as Sonic, except for his Final Smash, which we would change around to be unique just for him. Or, we could even steal Bayonetta's Witch Time mechanic and give it to Shadow to give him some kind of a chaos-controlled time manipulation. And that brings us to the final guest character, and the final character in this roster. And for the final spot, we have to go out big. We need someone to break the door down and take the world by storm, and nobody is a better option for that than... Just do it. Listen, I know that Doom might not have the biggest connection to Nintendo, although Doom 64 is certainly worthy to bring up, but Doom is important enough to the history of video games itself that if we're putting together a massive video game crossover, it feels like he belongs in here. This one game is almost entirely responsible for the explosion of first-person shooters that we got all throughout the 90s. Every single year, heck, every single month, we were getting brand new first-person shooters because everyone wanted to be the next Doom, and it's continuously been ported to almost everything. There is an entire subsection of first-person shooters still to this day that are referred to as boomer shooters, and we all know what those games are taking inspiration from. So yes, to be the face of the first-person shooter genre in Smash Bros, we need Doom Guy. You could give him a decent number of projectiles, a grab where he beats you up as your character starts glowing like it's the family-friendly version of the glory kills in his game, and for his final smash, he has to pull out the BFG. And on his stage, we could load that thing full of floating caco demons, and if you hit them, then they could explode as an item pops out of them. Or if you want to get really weird with his stage, you could have a secret on there, where if the opponent is falling off the stage, they could then grab onto an invisible ledge, 
and then climb back up underneath the stage to reveal a secret old school 16-bit graphic room underneath the stage, kind of like the secret rooms in Doom 2016. So yeah, his franchise is legendary and innovative and he's got a full move set. But there's one other reason to include him, and let's be real, it's the actual reason I'm putting Doom Slayer in here. It's because of the memes. Yeah, I'll admit it. I'm putting him in here because, yes, he does deserve it. But also because for the past four years now, Doom and Animal Crossing have had the weirdest friendship of all time on the internet. The reveal trailer alone of him coming to the village and meeting Isabel would be the second time that Smash Bros broke the internet. And for anyone who says that you shouldn't put a character into this game just because everyone makes jokes about it, why do you think Waluigi was in here? Yeah, let's not act like we're all above that at this point. We started this roster off with a character who was included simply because of the memes. We're going out on a character who was included simply because of the memes. And there you have it, everyone. Over 40 characters gone and over 40 characters added. Thank you all for joining us for one of the weirdest build the rosters yet. But you know what? As bizarre as this episode was, that's kind of why I love build the roster. I've said many times before, but to me, build the roster isn't just listing off a bunch of characters that I like. No, it's more of a big thought experiment. It's how would you build these rosters within all these crazy restrictions? It's fun to challenge yourself like that. In fact, I recommend that you all try it at home. Get some friends together and try to figure out how you would build this new Smash Bros. If you had to remove half the old cast, then add that many on. And if you want to go that extra step, try to match Nintendo characters and guest characters and Echo Fighters with each other. It's actually a pretty interesting challenge and I bet you'd all come up with something really wild. But that's it, another Smash roster in the books. If you enjoyed this episode and you're interested in what we do here on this channel, make sure that you give us a like and a follow. In case you haven't heard by now, this is the year of 100,000 subs. That's right, we're going to do it. We are going to hit 100K by the end of the year, so help us make that happen and make sure to click that subscribe button down there and ring the bell and leave a comment down there. Those things help YouTube know to spread these videos around. Thank you so much for tuning in today, everyone. If you want more from me, then you can sign up for our Patreon to get some behind-the-scenes look at some upcoming videos, or you can find me on all the socials out there. They just summoned up Blue Sky. I'm on Blue Sky. You can find me there. But I'm also on all the other places out there. Thanks for tuning in today, everyone. Stay safe out there, and come back next time.